I'm Safi. And I'm Mystic. And this is Lore Together. This is a podcast where a husband and wife team talk about all the world building characters and backgrounds to our favorite video games because that's what we like to do together. We lore together. Yep. And then this is episode 25. <gasps> Almost to our year anniversary of podcasting. Yep. And we're actually heading back. I'm not, I didn't keep this one a secret from Safi because I wanted to make sure that it was something that she wanted to cover. Yeah. Uh, we're actually heading back to Elder Scrolls, not to cover Ooh. a game, but to cover holidays. Yeah. For the most part, and a little bit on like timekeeping and the calendar in general and stuff. First, a couple of disclosures. I should say one disclosure in particular. Our son may be in the background because he is so wee and we cannot just put him down. We have we would record if he was asleep, but then I'd be asleep because that's how tired I am all these days. Yeah. So that's how it is. Second, though, not really disclosure, but we just want to encourage you to follow us on all the things. Which, by all the things, I really mean Instagram and Twitter, which is where we're really at, at Lore Together. You can also email us, loretogether at gmail.com. Make sure that you put reviews on iTunes, Podchaser, or any other podcasting place that will allow you to put down a review or two. Hopefully you like us. And I think there's one more thing. Yeah, if you want to support us, we are a new family at this point. If you want to support us financially, you can do that by going to patreon.com slash loretogether where you can pay per main episode, because mm -hmm. we don't charge for the mini episodes. No, we don't. But per main episode, you can do a pledge, and you'll get access to episodes early, or access to mini episodes, or access to our bi-weekly stream where we play through the games that we talk about. Yeah, we are talking about, we have released our first two mini episodes to the public, but we think after a point, we may put that on Patreon. So. And then make our live streams public. Yes, so. so we're figuring it out. That'll be more of a 2021 update. So just keep an eye out for any announcements again on our Twitter, on our Instagram, and anywhere else. Also, make sure you're following us on Instagram for our Shop Small for Christmas. We're at the point now where you probably wouldn't get these presents in time for Christmas. But if you get a gift card or some cash from family and you're not sure who to give it to, here's some small businesses that would appreciate mm -hmm. You buying their candles, their dice, their t-shirts, whatever it is. So. And we'll continue. Uh, if we have any shop ideas after the holidays, we'll still post them too. Yeah, so I think not? every once in a while we're definitely going to give a shout out to small businesses. Because, you know, as a podcaster, you're a small business too. So we got a lot of appreciation for that. So shall we start? I mean, if a uh, little buddy lets us, sure. Yeah. Okay, so it's been a while since we've been to Elder Scrolls. The last one we did was episode six. And we did a four-part streak. Oh my gosh, yeah. That, so that was two months of Elder Scrolls. Yeah. So we so needed a break. Episodes three and four was three and three was the basic geography mm -hmm. and the creation, and then four was the Aedra, which are the quote good gods and deities of the Imperial Pantheon specifically. Mm -hmm. You may want to go back and check those episodes because I'm not going to cover them all again here. Mm -hmm. And then five and six were the Daedra, which are the quote bad guys. Not really. It's as with everything, it's not black and white. It's a lot of gray. Yeah, nuance. So much nuance. So what we're going to cover this time is basically how they keep time, how they do calendars, okay, and how they tell time through the ages and stuff, and then holidays. So look into any Elder Scrolls game. As far as I know, I have not played them all to as much detail or as in-depth as Oblivion or Skyrim. Right. Look into any of them, and you will not find a mechanical clock anywhere. Oh, I hadn't even noticed that. They only have sundials, then. You can find sundials. Mm -hmm. I don't think I've seen one in Skyrim yet, but mm. I could be wrong. You can find them in the second era in Elder Scrolls Online. Okay. And apparently the Priory of the Nine in Cyrodiil, which you can see in Oblivion, has a vertical sundial. I don't remember seeing that. And then in Skyrim, there is a moon dial in a vampire castle that used to be a sundial. Okay. So sundials exist. The more ubiquitous timekeeping device is an hourglass. Oh, okay. We can actually find these in Oblivion. Mm -hmm. Akatosh is often depicted with an hourglass. Okay. Akatosh is the god of time. Okay. And if we glimpse into Elder Scrolls Online and the second era, because Elder Scrolls Online takes place before all the other games, mm -hmm. I think, all the other games. I think most of them are in the third and fourth era, but Elder Scrolls Online is in the second era. 
We'll okay. get to the errors in a minute. Back in the second era, there's the Enclave of the Hourglass, which is a fort near the Cyrodiil city of Kvach. And also in the second era, the Vestige, the hero of Elder Scrolls Online, they have great hero names. Everyone's always the something. Something. Yeah. yeah. Or the hero of something. That's a fantasy trope, you know? Yeah. Or, it it or... just makes it easier when you're doing dialogue to a person. You don't have to do names as much. Yeah. Dragon Age does the same thing. The hero of Ferelden, the... The Inquisitor. What was, uh, Hawk was, uh, the champion. The champion, yeah. yes. Mm -hmm. I wonder what the new one's going to be. The nobody is what they're <laughs> advertising it as, and I do not believe that, but whatever. <laughs> so, in Elder Scrolls Online, in the second era, you can visit an area called, I'm going to cover this because I like this, because I, I love the Khajiit. So, you oh, can visit yeah. an area called the Spilled Sand, which is speculated to be the realm of Alkosh, also known as the Dragon King of Cats, the first cat the high main and the great cat king of time. I like the high main as if there's something regal but it's grown. Yeah. It's almost like a magical thing like oh now that I have this position suddenly I am a plume with the luscious of furs around my face. <laughs> he is depicted as a fearsome dragon which the Khajiit say is a really big cat. I can see <laughs> arguments for that especially if you're going for eastern interpretations of dragons. Yeah, I could see that. Alkosh is the Khajiit version of Akatosh, the god of time, mm -hmm. as we discussed way back in episode three. Uh, this is the only time that we do see into his alleged realm, and in the middle of his realm is a giant hourglass. So hourglasses is a symbol that people would know and know the meaning of. Okay. Or it could just be that the citizens of Tamriel just have an amazing sense of time, because they always seem to do things with great punctuality in all the games. Okay. Sorry. Since Oblivion. More when people did not walk around and have like schedules and stuff, that was a thing that came with Oblivion. Right, because they finally had the ability to program the AI to have like weekly schedules. Mm -hmm. So that's like how you count through a day. Okay. How do you count longer passages of time? Right. And the passage of time are broken into different segments. First, the largest is eras, and we have six of these. Okay. First is the Dawn era, which is the creation, and it's prehistoric. Mm-hmm. Literally, the second that writing is created, yeah, we move from the Dawn Era to the Merithic, like written history is created, we move from Dawn Era to the Merithic Era, which is when the Mer, Elves and Oryx, okay. are all moving about, and the humans first appear. So, and if I remember correctly, they are created by Adra that basically were convinced to be creators of this world yeah kind of it gets weird because we it, there's <laughs> you go from the adra mm -hmm. to lesser adra which are the el which become the el no fey which then ends up becoming the mer it gets really complicated after the mer the merithic era we have the first second third and fourth eras because now we're into actual calendars the merithic era is kind of Really wibbly wobbly timey wimey. There's not a lot of okay. hard and fast dates. Once the first era hits, everything has a date for the okay. most part. All right. How and long is an era usually? They can go any. Um, they can go anywhere from a couple centuries to thirty centuries. Whoa. Yeah, we'll oh. get to that in a second. Each of these, even the dawn era, which we have already covered briefly, mm -hmm. could be whole episodes in and of themselves. Right. Exactly. So. That makes sense. Yeah. We didn't do a huge deep dive into the Dawn era even when we covered the creation. Like there's a lot of stuff we kind of gl glimpsed well, over. Well, I think, yeah, and that was early on why before we knew. I think if we had known what we know now with a game like this, we probably would have just had this episode's the Dawn era. Now let's take a break right. and go to the next thing because we probably won't be doing any four-part series anytime soon. Two parts we can do. Two parts is, yeah. oh yeah, a month of, of, of that, yeah. A month of Just Cause. And the funny thing there is those were not well-received episodes. They weren't bad. Right. But they weren't like the high ratings. But it's so funny watching the first one come in, which is mm -hmm. the older one, but the second one has more more listens. Because you titled it Just Cause Gets Interesting. And it does. Because that was correct. <laughs> it, that's the more interesting of the two episodes, let's be honest. But you need the first one to kind of set up that one. Do, do you? Do not you? entirely. It does help, though. It helps. Yeah. It does help. Not to say don't listen. I want everybody to listen to all of our episodes, obviously. But do you need the first one? Eh, I don't know. <laughs> Much like Dragon Age, a big event seems to usher in a new age. Oh, well, a new era. 
I will correction. Ages are always a century long. Are they? Yes. And I they thought are... they were. Oh no! The what what it's called is determined by symbol. Yeah, so essentially, okay. it's essentially the, the church will decide what they're going to call it. For example, Dragon Age, I think, was almost called the Sun Age because the Orlesian Empire was reigning over everything the sun touched. I misremembered that. Yeah. I thought that I thought the the ages were longer in Dragon Age. They are if if but it's it is the same thing. Like here's this big thing, that's what we're calling it. Yeah. So it is named after a, a symbol <clears throat> of the beginning of that century. Yeah. Um here, errors just keep going until something changes that like world changing happens fall okay. of an empire daedric invasion something like that that's the change of the age so they're the energizer the bunny of historic implications so the dawn era is time has time is meaningless at that point because it's a lot right. of its myth or it's not really invented yet time right is, yeah the merithic era is about 2500 years so okay. 25 centuries the first era is 30 centuries Wow, okay. Yeah. The uh third and fourth eras I think are five and three centuries, or I could be wrong about that. I, I'm forgetting which one it is. But like we're only in like the third century or fourth century mm-hmm. in Oblivion and in Skyrim. Okay. And those take place two hundred and fifty years apart in different eras. Okay. Um literally Oblivion is the last days of the third era. Ah, okay. That's the, that makes that's sense. a crisis that changes the era. Right. So, eras are made up of centuries, which are made up of years. So far, so good. Yep. Years are made up of months, and there are 12 of them. Cool. So, this is very familiar to us. 12 of them in order are Morning Star, Sun's Dawn, First Seed, Rain's Hand, Second Seed, Mid-Year, guess where that is, Huh. Sun's Height, Last Seed, Hearth fire, sometimes labeled heart fire. It's, it's there's typos sometimes. Heart fire sounds like a like a K-pop band, by the way. <laughs> Frostfall, sun's dusk. I typed duck for some reason. Sun's duck. <laughs> I like that and one. I wanted to be that now. Evening star. Evening star. So that makes sense. Yeah, it, there, there, there's themes that you can see like, okay, this makes sense. And some people will be like, well, why isn't Safi critiquing how lazy these names are because oh, you want lazy names. You want lazy. Wait, wait, wait. I was just going to say, I'm not going to critique this because the months, honestly, are lazily named by a lot of the Roman right. generals before. So, like, what is it? Is it June Literally is named after a guy who had a head on either side. Or no, it's January because that was the beginning of the year. All I know is that the something. only reason that o- October is not the eighth month is because Julius Caesar had to jam in himself into a month. August, yeah, Augustus, <laughs> yeah. So August messed so, it up. So, but the but the names make sense. Yes. Now we get to months are made up of seven day weeks, and okay. if you want lazy names. These are some lazy names. Seven. So, well, we're naming all seven of the days. Yes. Okay. Sundas. Uh huh. Morndas. Uh huh. Teardas. Okay. Midas. Okay. Turdas. Uh huh. Freydas. Yeah, this is getting and lazy. And Lordas. Yeah, that's that's just got lazy. Got lazy. But at the same time, yeah. Who cares? Um. There they, are seven days. They could have at least chosen a different language. Right. Switched it up a little bit. Which they do sometimes. Like, so here's the funny thing. If I wanted to give you the 12 months, yeah. they ha- I couldn't find a listing for the 12 months in anything other than what like the imperial calendar is or right. what, what most Tamrielic people call them. The Argonians have different names. Of course they of them. do. They're a totally different culture. Yeah. So, but yeah, there are... There, I think this is the result of... When Arena was coming out, it wasn't supposed to be this grand adventure. That's why it's right. called Arena. It was yes. literally just a dungeon thing. And they ended up just having more time. Right. So they're just like, keep making stuff. <laughs> so certain names actually sound pretty lazy in comparison to what they could be. This sounds like when you're running a brown box D&D game. Right. That's true. It's first generation. It's... You know, early fantasy. This is the 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 mid nineties. I am fine with it. 
in the end because it's not the biggest deal. The month names you hear a heck of a lot more than the day names. And the month names, again, I will not call the laziest because there can't be any lazier than what we use in the modern day and age. Right. So. Where all of our names come from places that most people don't realize, like Wednesday being for Woden mm-hmm. and Thursday being for Thor. And right. yeah, so. <laughs> or like the months, again, as you mentioned, right. that because July and August messed it up, September is not the seventh month, it's the ninth right. month. Yeah. Calendar is also a bit wonky in a different way. Elder Scrolls 1, Arena, was literally the 1993 Julian calendar with the different names. Okay. Fair enough. I, I'll accept that because it's easier and you're doing a dungeon crawl. Why not? Daggerfall had each month have 30 days. Exactly. Exactly. Also, the first day of the month was always Sundas. No. And the last day was always Morndas, which means <laughs> you'd go from Morndas. Yeah. Go through the, in the middle of the night, it switches back to Sundas. Yeah. And then you'd be back at Morndas, and then you'd go on to Tiradas. <laughs> I know. I, no, that, I hate that. I hate, <laughs> I hate that concept entirely. After Ooh. that, everything is back to the Julian calendar with the names change. Fine. I'll accept it. No problem with it. I I mean, I do the same thing in my campaigns most of the time. It's still easier to understand than Star Trek star dates. Well, yes. Though you can calculate them apparently. No, you well, you know why they started this how the star dates started, right? No. I mean, you may have told me but I don't remember now. Star Trek star dates were actually tracking what seasons based on the original series. Oh yeah, no, I know that. Yeah. Yeah. So that's, and then Next Generation, everything else kind of just accumulated on that. With Discovery, when they actually, apparently somebody calculated that it is accurate. So they do, you can calculate them. Like somebody has figured out how to do it. Right. But to the, to a lay person who's not a Trekkie, it doesn't make sense. Like Klingon. Yeah. Which you can learn on Duolingo. As we have our friend doing, and he swears us all the time. I'm like so tempted (laughs) To make that my New Year's resolution, to learn Klingon on Duolingo. Most of the holiday information we have, we're getting into holidays here, Yay! comes from Daggerfall, which was the one that kind of really started establishing the deeper bits of lore in terms of like the deities and, and now, everything. And that was the one that had a specific Redguard character that we were following? No, that no. is, okay. uh, that's Redguard. Duh. Yeah. I could, you uh, told Daggerfall me is probably one of the largest games ever created at the time. Okay. It is all procedurally, procedurally generated outside of like specific hand done cities and dungeons. Okay. So it, it's really big for the time. Like it's actually ah. considered still big for this day, even. Interesting. Like there are bigger, especially when you get into MMOs, there are bigger. Right. Well, you but have to do with those. Up until like the early 2000s, it was still one of the largest worlds, like in the top five. Wow, that's pretty impressive. I hope those developers are still proud of themselves for for doing something like that. I would I would then proceed to say, okay, I know I will never traverse all of this ever. Right now, Elder Scrolls Online takes place is a social game. Mm-hmm. It has a calendar that's similar to our calendar. Okay. So holidays sometimes transfer over and bleed over. So now we have a lot more holidays that have come in because of Elder Scrolls Online. Nice. Okay. I accept this. I accept this reality. <laughs> it has some thought to it. Right. It's not haberdash. Sometimes, I'm, I'll be entirely honest, I am really reading wiki entries here. I've kind of picked and chosen. We're more reacting to it here. There's not a lot on some of these. Some of these are just a single line, and it comes down to, we, we get some things like, in, the ta- in this town of blank, they do blah. We don't know where the town is. We don't know the race that's primarily there. It's just name, name, go. Like it's just a line of dialogue in a book somewhere or in a dialogue box. That's that's fine. I feel like right. that's what it is. If anybody's on social media, you'll see a lot of times there'll be a hashtag for like a random holiday. And that's what I feel like a lot of those hands is like, oh, it's 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 National Hat Day. Right. That's a day? Why, <laughs> why are we even truly? We don't get any this? of that. Also, I'm not going to do any of these summoning days. There are days that you can apparently summon a Daedra Ooh. more frequently. That's not a holiday. That's a that's a threat. Well, it's a festival. 
Like, if you are yeah. a follower of Periite, you would go to Periite Shrine and you would be able to have a like have a a, a, a prayer circle or whatever yeah, or I mean, a summoning ritual and meet your deity. But there's like, a lot of Daedra that you don't want to summon. True, but just saying, I'm not going to do those days because okay. it's just that's the only thing that's there. Like sometimes there's a couple of the days that are major holidays are also summoning days. I'm just not going to bother mentioning it because it's just a summoning day. It's not like there's a special right to it, as far as I know. Okay. It's not like anything major. Is, it's like a. It's not like a national holiday. Okay. You know? It's not. It's not something that's. It's lore. not even on the scale of Flag Day, is what you're telling me. Right. It's there's nothing okay. lore there to dig into other than hey, you can you can summon Sanguine on on such and such day, you know, or you can yeah. summon. Mayrun's Dagon for some terrible reason or Molag Ball. Like Yeah, yeah. <laughs> let's not let's not encourage those behaviors at all right now. Now something Azura would be fine, but True. And many of these are taken from a single line of book, in a book or a dialogue, as I said. In fact, some of the dialogue that is some of the wiki entries are just ripped from the game. So we will get a line like, quote, Perhaps no other festival fires the spirit of city name as much as the one held today. Yikes. So, yeah. Uh, let's go take the months in order. So we'll start with Morningstar, the first month of the year. Mm-hmm. First month of the year, what do you think the first one is going to be? <laughs> Basically New Year's. First of Morningstar, the New Life Festival. A Tamriel-wide event that celebrates the birth of a new year and celebrates the death of the old one. Mm-hmm. Celebrations include feasting, races, games, dancing, and of course, drinking. So much drinking. In the Third Era, the reigning emperor is known to give a new life address during this period, and many provinces observe the tradition of free ale in all the taverns. Oh my gosh, I would be so drunk. (laughs) Keep in mind that free ale in the taverns. You will hear that a few times. (laughs) So much free ale. I would be that kind of person who I'd be like, okay, how many days? And not, you know, not to say that I have a problem or anything, but just the idea of being able to have free celebratory drinks and be like, all right, how many days until I can go to the bar for free again? Great. <laughs> but remember to tip your bartender. Right. Some specific cultural celebrations, specific towns, specific cultures. Bosmer immigrants to Oradon introduced the locals of Skywatch to the Mud Ball Merriment, a game where balls of mud are thrown at everyone. And each year, the Bosmer would also agree upon a specific target that they felt needed to be humbled the most. Oh, I'm 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 really okay with this. This is a fantastic <laughs> idea. I feel like I have a few people on my list of who I'd love to humble with some mud to the face. <laughs> the Altimer of Haven celebrate through the War Orphan Sojourn. Participants travel to a temple in the heart of Grotwood and donate what they can, be it their gold or their time. Oh, that's nice. Similarly, the Argonians of Hismir have the Fish Boon Feast. Those who are able to fish bring back food for those who are unable to. This is to remind them that it warms the heart to feed the hungry and to help those who are truly in need. That's also extremely nice. More obscure celebrations include that of the Nords of Lower Yorgrim, who celebrate by traveling to remote places, stripping down and leaping into freezing water, then drying off by a large fire amongst fellow participants. I am not surprised, and I also would not do that, because... (laughs) No, no, Nords, no. You can keep that celebration. (laughs) This is to show that they aren't afraid of what the cold brings and that the end of the winter's journey is a warm fire and good company. You know what? The cold only brings everybody realizing how cold when they see through my shirt. That's really what the cold (laughs) brings. I don't need that in my life. That and dry skin. Surprisingly, new life is not viewed positively by vampires, werewolves, and the undead. It means the days are going to get longer again. Oh, yeah, because it's essentially the winter solstice. Yeah, Yeah, I can understand that. Second of Morning Star is Scour Day, specific to High Rock. Basically, clean up from the day before. It's kind of become its own celebration. <laughs> it's kind of like Boxing Day in that regard, <laughs> then. Okay. 14th or 15th of Morning Star. Couldn't figure out which one it was. It's both, both were listed. A plea by all the religions of Tamriel for a good planting season. Citizens with every mm. affliction known in Tamriel flock to the services of the city's temples as the clergy are known to perform free healings on this day. Oh, yeah. Only some will be judged worthy of this service, but few can afford the temple's usual price. That's why we need universal health care. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on to the second month, Sun's Dawn. Second of Sun's Dawn, Mad Pelagius. 
Med Pelagius is a silly little tradition in High Rock in a mock memorial to Pelagius Septim III, one of the maddest emperors in recent history. Oh my gosh, please tell me they, they dance with face paint and paper crowns. Couldn't find that information. No, that's... Okay, so that's... I've decided that if, if we celebrate that, that's what I want to do. I want to dance with face or paint... If, and paper crowns. Yeah. He died about 350 years ago, so the septum since have taken it with good humor. I I would hope. Literary Pelagius was so mad. I, I remember that in Skyrim, you go into his mind when you do Sheogorath's Daedric quest. <laughs> oh, okay. That makes sense. Is there any theory as to why he was that mad? The reason that the people of High Rock do this tradition is because they believe that his time in High Rock drove him mad. <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> and so they're celebrating the fact that they they made somebody go crazy? I think they made his life difficult, yeah. Interesting. Uh, okay. 16th of Sun's Dawn. It is the middle of the second month. What do you think this might be? I'm giving a look to Mystic. <laughs> Heart Day. Oh. And almost, every, actually it gets a little bit, it, it, I would not mind Valentine's Day if it was actually like this a little bit. In almost every house, the legend of the lovers is sung. In honor of these lovers, Polydor and Eloisa, the inns of various cities offer free room for visitors. Free, wait, free rooms for visitors? As in, basically, if you need a (laughs) motel right now, just head on in. So do all the homeless take advantage of this? I don't know. This is, I believe this is from Daggerfall and Elder Scrolls Online. I don't think it was mentioned in any other game yet. Okay. Uh, to properly set the mood in the bedroom of in honor of Heart's Day, flower petals, sweet rolls, and much more are brought in. You cannot... Okay. We are a family-friendly show. But I will say... We're not, we're not about to be. <laughs> I, I'm, I will just say that if you want to have an exciting evening... Do not feast on sweet rice. <laughs> um, flowers associated with the Bella are picked for the occasion. Makes oh, sense. Yeah, that's that's. There was also <laughs> a mass wedding prayer or reading under Mara. This kind of blurs the lines a little bit between yeah. the game universe and our universe, as the event was like the only time I can actually find this mm-hmm. was not in game. It was during a Twitch live stream. With the one of the writers oh. for Elder Scrolls Online during Heart Day, so is it in the universe or not? It's it's impl- it's it's implied that it is. Yeah, but there's no like, there's not like this event happened. So so, uh, so it sounds like it's also a day where a lot of young ladies go around their crush with an amulet of Mara around their neck, going. <laughs> mm. uh, it's also the day. It's, I will mention, it is the summoning day for Sanguine, and it is therefore implied that there are a lot of orgies that day as well. Yikes. Kids, ask your parents what that is. We will parents, not Parents, we're sorry. Yeah, <laughs> we're not explaining that on the show. Let's move on to the, to the third month, First Seed. Wait, wait. We're talking about a day full of romance, and then First Seed <laughs> is the next holiday? First Seed is the next month. The next holiday we're going to talk about is on the 7th of First Seed, which is the first planting, which is sowing seeds for the autumn harvest. Okay, still, it's after the romance holiday. I'm sure, I, I don't remember if there's a holiday between the two. I think there is, but I didn't copy every single holiday. No, I, I, I did the more interesting ones. I don't blame you for not copying every single holiday. It's just the order <laughs> that we're taking them is in. It's very interesting. First planting is a festival of fresh beginnings, both for the crops and for the men and women of Tamriel. Neighbors are reconciled in their disputes. Resolutions are formed, bad habits are dropped, and the diseased are cured. The clergy of the temples run a free clinic all day to cure people of poisoning diseases, paralyzation, and other banes that can be found throughout the continent of Tamriel. Mm. Interesting. Okay. We're going to move on to the next month already. Rain's Hand, the fourth month. Okay. 28th of Rain's Hand, Jester's Day. Oh, we better have paper crowns and makeup on our faces for this one. <laughs> the Jester's Festival, also known as the Jester's Day and the Festival of Fools, is an annual holiday that falls on the 28th of Rain's Hand. During the event, troops of jesters and fools encourage the people of Tamriel of all walks of life to celebrate the foolish and the absurd. Performers roam the streets and openly mock the powerful. Towns celebrate with festive pranks and silly games are held with joke prizes awarded as an incentive. I want to know what is considered a festive prank. Like, is there glitter? 
because then I, I there's then fireworks I just, and stuff i think yeah fireworks booms i hope there's no like there's illusions know, and all that stuff i hope there's no chamber pots on top of doors <laughs> during this time the thieves guild takes advantage of the insanity and strike people's pockets well, it's still my pocket shut that day. Forget that noise. The origins of the Jester's Festival are speculated, with some stating it originated with Sher Gorth, once turning the whole world mad, mm. or that it sprung from Mur emulating the character, a caricature of men. That's insulting. Other theories tie it closely to the invention of alcoholic beverages. There's an interesting theory about alcoholic beverages. <laughs> or East Grimoire teaching Mur humor. I like it being tied to the invention of alcohol. There's actually, there's actually a theory that our love f- for getting inebriated is why we went to agriculture. I believe it. Yeah, essentially, agriculture tricked us into yeah. growing more more plants. I just heard about this thing earlier this week. Actually, do you know what the first provable math mistake is? Please tell me a tree did it. No. Oh. The first proof of math mistake is by, I don't know if it's by a person or by a person working under an entity. It is attributed to a, a entity named Cushim, K-U-S-H-I-M. Okay. And essentially it, it, it is the, the he, this is the oldest person we have a name for, period. Not a king, not a warrior, accountant. Wait. To be somebody who's made a mistake so bad that humans have evolved past where your existence was <laughs> on a DNA level, <laughs> and they still know your name for a mistake. Well, oh, man. it's either Cushion or his boss, I think it was Nisa, wow. or one of their apprentices writing on this tablet, but they basically got a, a calculation wrong. And the reason we know it's a calculation is because there it's it's a multiplication table, oh. and all the ones after it are correct. Like we can figure out what they're trying to calculate, but the first one is wrong. <laughs> so somebody wrote it wrong. I don't remember the exact specifics. I'll link a video down in the description. And that was in stone. That was in like a clay tablet before the invention of cuneiform. And it, the whole reason, the whole thing that this was tracking was barley. Somebody <laughs> messed up. I could just see it now. Somebody running up to whoever was in charge of that. Kushim, what is this? You know that we are short three barrels of barley right now? I'll send you the video too. I have to show it to you. You would find it fun. Yeah. Some examples of the festival activities include impersonating sovereigns and entrusting fools with tasks of mischief and someone is usually crowned lord or lady of misrule. Please tell me there was a goat that was crowned that for once. <laughs> I just something like that. Just, Just... Absolute insanity. Fifth month of the year, second seed. The seventh of second seed is second planting. Obviously, yeah. this is medieval and pre-medieval mm-hmm. civilization. Harvest is everything. It's a big deal. It's the only way you know that you're going to live. Right. So. Very similar traditions to first planting. Improvements on the first seeding symbolically suggest improvements on the soul. Free clinics are back again. Okay. For the last time this year. This is we're, why we're we not even halfway through the year, and the free clinics. This is their last time. This is why we need universal healthcare. <laughs> one thing that I did find in the wiki for this one that I didn't find in the other one is because peace and not conflict is stressed at this time, battle injuries only are full price still. Interesting. So, so, so don't be whacking each other with sticks. If you picked a fight with the wrong person at the previous holiday, <laughs> you're SOL. Okay. 30th of second seed, fishing day. This is not a nationwide, this is not a Tamriel white thing. Fishing Day is a big celebration for all the Bretons who live off the bounty of the Iliac Bay. Mm. Iliac Bay separates High Rock and Hammerfell. Is there like a spawning thing that's happening around that time or something like that? No. <laughs> they literally say, they're not a usually flamboyant people, but on Fishing Day, they make so much noise, fish have been scared away for weeks. They may want to tone that down. How, did, how would you be too loud to scare away fish that are in the water? The, the sound doesn't travel that well from air to water, I would think. Is flamboyant the right word for that? I don't think so. Yeah. Mid-year, the sixth month of the year. Unknown date. Don't know which day this falls and I couldn't find information. Mm. Pelinel's Mid-Year Massacre. What? Now all these are happy celebrations. 
It's an imperial celebration that dates back to the fall of the Aliads. This is during the, uh, I think the first era. Celebrants remember Pelinal Whitesnake's slaughter of the Aliad forces at Heldon Bridge, a key battle to capturing the imperial city. Oh, man. During the celebrations, warriors are anointed with a red blood-like substance in honor and mimicry of Pelinal, whose face and hair were said to have been covered in blood of righteously slaughtered Aliads. That's disturbing. And this, we're imitating that? This ritual is said to invigorate warriors and imbue them with righteous power, or even grant visions of St. Alessia herself. No! The this... celebrations are presided over by priests of St. Alessia. They are charged with delivering sermons and offering blessings to combatants, who are said to become renowned for their brave deeds in the days thereafter. We're... Okay, the encouragement of murder, I understand that that was kind of a thing you had to do in medieval eras, I guess, because of the way... Kings were fighting for each other's land and stuff like that. Well, at this point, so here's the the a little bit of um, a little bit of context here is Saint Alessia was the first emperor over Cyrodiil after the, the rebellion against the Aliads, who were had enslaved the humans. Oh, okay. So. So they felt righteous enough that they could slaughter everybody, and that's right. why they're wearing the blood. And what is it? I'm sorry. What is it? Conan would say, "I never get the phrase right." <laughs> is is what is the best in life? What is best? What in is life? best in life? life? I'm not going to do a, Con- a, a a Schwarzenegger voice, but it is uh, to slaughter your enemies, to see them driven before you, and to hear the lamentations of the women. <laughs> I think I'm I'm accurate on that. I gotta find the Conan the Barbarian song and and share it on Twitter now. Sixteenth <laughs> of mid year, mid year celebration. Oh goody! I wonder what that could be about. I could never guess. Uh, yeah, obviously we're we're smack dab in the middle of the year. Perhaps to alleviate the annual news of the emperor's latest tax increase, the city's temples offer oh, blessings okay. for only half the donation they usually suggest. So we're not free, but we're at half the donation. The the idea that gods give a discount, I just <laughs> I just have problems with that idea. Many so blessed feel confident enough to enter the dangerous dungeons when they are not fully prepared, so they kind of get too much of a boost. So this joyous mm-hmm. festival has been known to turn suddenly into a day of defeat and tragedy. Maybe just stop having it. <laughs> Maybe just stop. I mean, it just it sounds like an excuse to have a holiday. It's kind of like Valentine's Day. It, <laughs> No, no, no. It's kind of like Sweetest Day. That's what it's oh, yeah. like. Valentine's Day at least is kind of remember, based off a saint's holiday. And... Remember in The Simpsons when they wanted to have another holiday? And that's like, let's make it something like Love Day, but not so whatever. And then it just is Love Day. Right. <laughs> Sun's Height, the seventh month of the year. This is actually an interesting one. Tenth of Sun's Height is the Merchant's Festival. Okay. The bargain shoppers of the known world are out in force today, and it's a little wonder. For the 10th of Sun's Height is a holiday called the Merchant's Festival. Every marketplace and equipment store has dropped their prices to at least half. Oh. The only shop not being patronized today is the Mages Guild, where prices are as exorbitant as usual. Well, that's fair. Yeah. So, and is there a reason why we are cutting our prices in half? It's just... Just, just, just a day. Just for just a holiday. Yeah. But... Here's the fun thing. 20th of Sunset, so 10 days later, Sun's Rest. If you're planning on making any equipment purchases, all stores are closed for observance of Sun's Rest. Okay. Temples, taverns, and mages guild in the city are still open the regular hours, but most citizens choose the, to devote this day to relaxation, not commerce or prayer. Mm. This is not a convenient arrangement for all, but the merchants guild heavily finds any shop that stays open so everyone complies. Wow, interesting. So it's a forced workers' holiday from apparently, your shop. but that's interesting that those two are right near each other. Ten day, like ten days after your stock is at half price, you don't sell anything. That seems weird. Yeah. So yeah, you have a half price, then you have ten days to try to catch up from the half price sale, and then you have a day off where you can't sell anything. Right. That sounds like a bad deal. Why are we doing these? Some of these holidays just sound like bad ideas. Well, to be All fair, around. some holidays in the real world sound like bad ideas. You know, I, I'm not even talking about the ones where you can make a goat king for a day. I'm talking about just <laughs> practical economics here. Last seed, the eighth month of the year. 27th of last seed is harvest end. Obviously, mm-hmm. last day of the harvest. The work of the year is over. Now's the time to celebrate and enjoy the fruits of the harvest. The taverns offer free drinks all day long. Nice. An extravagance before the economy of the coming winter months. 
Right. Underfed farmhands gorging themselves and then getting sick in the town square are the most common sites of the celebration of harvest end. I would think you would know how much you could eat before you make vomit all over yourself. <laughs> Bretons celebrate the harvest festival and attempt to placate Shore, the bad man, the ancient Breton cr- god of crop failure. According to tradition, appeasing the bad man will ensure good fortune and a bountiful harvest. Fresh apples and bags of grain are burned on a sacrificial altar in his honor, followed by a feast. So we just had the harvest. We're going to... Burn half of it? Well, not probably not half. Probably a small amount. Like a, a, a very small amount. But then we're going to have a giant feast. <laughs> okay. Can we roast on that giant fire that we just <laughs> sacrificed stuff to? Because I'm a very practical lady. This day... In the year 433 of the Third Era marked the beginning of the Oblivion Crisis when Euro Septim VII, played by Patrick Stewart, and his sons are assassinated by mythic Don cultists who are worshippers of Mehrun's Dagon. Right. I felt it would be worth it to bring that up, but we'll cover that when we cover Oblivion at some future point. So everybody was distracted because they were burning their apples or whatever. (laughs) Well, that's the Bretons. So, Uh, Well, that's true. So the Bretons were distracted because they were burning their apples. So if you were a Breton in jail, you were like, man... I miss burning it is, those apples. So here's the funny thing. There's a lot we don't see of the Oblivion Crisis. Mm-hmm. We are only in Cyrodiil and Oblivion. Right. Which is where the most of it's happening, but in yeah. the lore, stuff happens all over. Right. It's Because that's why in Skyrim, you can see remnants of the Oblivion Crisis. Well, that's because I modded yeah. them in. Oh, I forgot that was a mod. Well, I, I, and you said there's a 250-year difference? Yeah. Yeah, there would have been still some stuff going on around yeah. there. Ninth month of the year, hearth fire. Now that we're past all the drudgery, it's kind of like real life. Now that you're past all the boring middle months, now yeah. we're getting to some of the interesting ones. <laughs> hearth fire, are we burning more apples? No. Okay. Third of hearth fire, tails and tallows. Tails and tallows. Interesting. Wait, wait, tails and tallows. Are we making oxtail soup? No. No. A few of the oldest, more superstitious men and women do not speak all day long for fear that the evil spirits of the dead will enter their bodies. Whoa. Most citizens enjoy this holiday, but even the most lighthearted avoid the darker streets as everyone knows the dead walk at night. Only the Mage's Guild thrives on this day. In celebration of the oldest magical science, necromancy, all magical items are half price. Wow. Which is weird since necromancy is outlawed. So we're happy that it exists, but I we think can't practice it. There's resurrection, there's restoration, right? and then there's the dark art of necromancy, which is different. That is corruption of a corpse. Well, yeah, because I think the idea, restoration suggests that you're bringing it back to what once what it once was as does re- as does resurrection. Right. Necromancy is taking somebody and imbuing them with the life force not of their own. Right. Essentially, it's possession of some sort. Yeah. Now, a not-so-happy one, the 19th of Hearth Fire, Children's Day. Wait, it's called Children's Day, but it's not a happy one? A festive occasion with a grim history. Everyone remembers, but doesn't talk about... This is actually in a specific town, sorry. But everyone remember, remembers, but doesn't really talk about how Children's Day began as a memorial to the dozens of children in Bethany who were stolen from their homes by vampires one night and never seen again. This happened over 100 years ago, and the holiday has since become a celebration of youth. What the heck? That's so great. Did we ever find out what the heck those vampires did with all those children? I was not unaware of Bethany. I believe it's from Elder Scrolls Online, which I've barely played. So. Okay. Dang. I just, I feel like there's something more to it than just they ate them. I feel like they're going to come back and suddenly we're going to have vampire soldiers. There's... Uh, a vampire thing in with children in Morthal in Skyrim that you can actually it's I think it's the main quest of the town actually mm-hmm. and it's 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 a weird murder mystery type thing why did the house burn down yeah whatever and then you talk to a girl's ghost and stuff and it just gets weird but vampires are not all bad but mostly bad well, and I remember there was the, um, in the Assassin's Guild, there is the vampire girl where she Babette, is, yeah. Yeah, and she is much older, obviously, than she looks, and so she uses her She youth. was turned when she was like eight or nine, I think, but she's like over 300, yeah. <laughs> exactly. So she's she's an old lady, but she's got this child appearance. appearance. and voice. Yeah. So she uses it to her advantage to eat, essentially. Yeah. 
Heading into the tenth month of your Frostfall. The thirteenth of Frostfall, the Witches' Festival. Okay, so we went from celebrating when children were kidnapped to a witches' festival. The were denizens- there more children that were kidnapped? <laughs> no. Okay. Uh, the denizens of Tamriel defy their superstitious fears. Ghosts, demons, and evil spirits are mocked and celebrated by both occult occurrences and outrageous costumes. Beggars take to the streets and ask for alms, while children ask for festival treats, and people are obliged to provide them. It's essentially Halloween. All right, it's but it's a different kind of trick or treat. It's more just kind of like. There's really just treats. Yeah. The youth often engage in wanton vandalism as part of one of the festival's traditions. Okay, there are tricks and treats. Okay. All right. (laughs) During this time, the portals between Nern and Detritus open. The Daedra Lord, Hachluzek, better known as Hollow Jack, the Pumpkin Spectre, comes to feed on mortal terror. Fry Jack, the Pumpkin King. He often makes people's fears come true and drives them mad. Interesting. And it's obviously a very important day for witches and warlocks, and they spend most of the year preparing for it. I I like the idea now that the Nightmare Before Christmas is technically an Elder Scroll <laughs> variant, but but that's just now my head cannon. Nobody could take it away from me. Sun's Dusk, the eleventh month of the year. Eighth of Sun's Dusk, the Moon Festival. Okay. On the eighth of Sun Dusk, the Britons of Glenumbra Moors. Hold the Moon Festival, a joyous holiday in honor of Secunda, goddess of the moon. Mm. Although the goddess has no active worshippers, the traditional celebration has continued through the ages as a time of feasting and merriment. So no act... How do we know that there's no active worshippers? That seems kind of strange. Some people would say the Daedra have no active worshippers until you find them, so... Right. I mean, yeah. Anytime somebody says that, I'm very suspicious of that in a world as big as... Is Tamriel. Literally, you can go in oblivion when you go to a Daedric shrine. There's like four people at each one. <laughs> right. Always. Always. 20th of Sun's Dusk, the Warriors Festival. Most all the local warriors, spellswords, and rogues come to the equipment stores and blacksmiths where weapons are half price. Ooh. Unfortunately, the low prices also tempt many an untrained boy to buy his first sword. And the normally quiet streets ring with amateur skirmishes. Some, literally, you're going to poke your eye out. <laughs> Just kind of warning. Not shoot your eye out. Well, they might have a crossbow. Who knows? But buddy, still. you can't have a sword. No, no no swords for you, buddy. He couldn't even hold on to it anyway. He seems really perturbed by this, though. He's looking at me being like, I think I want that. Okay, we're in the last month of the year. We have a few holidays left. Oh, wow. Evening Star, the 12th month of the year. And we start with the 15th of Evening Star, the North Wind's Prayer. Okay. If you remember back in Morning Star, we had the South Wind's Prayer. Oh, okay. North Wind's Prayer is a thanksgiving to the gods for a good harvest and a mild winter. Mm -hmm. Some years the harvest is not particularly good and the winter is harsh, but as the rulers are fond of saying, it could be much worse. Yeah, basically be thankful for what you got or you could get it even worse. The temples offer all their services, blessing, curing, healing for half the donation usually requested. So we're back to half price for those things. I still say we need universal health care. 18th of Evening Star, Barenth Doe. Celebrated by the Red Guards of the Alakir Desert, its meaning is goodbye to the beast of last year. Oh, okay. Pageants featuring demonic representations of the old year are popular, and revelry to honor the new year is everywhere. So what would be a de- demonic representation of 2020, then? 2020? I personally, <laughs> I personally, everybody's called this year a dumpster fire, so I personally think it, it would be, in this medieval setting, what we'd want to do is make it a huge outhouse <laughs> that had like a maw set it on fire and give it like big claws and like angry eyes and he just goes rah, 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 rah. <laughs> rah, rah, rah. Rah, 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 rah. that's 2020 for this holiday 25th of evening star is not a christmas allegory essentially obviously it's going to be a little bit of a christmas allegory but it's not tamriel wide oh okay it is saturalia like Saturnalia. Okay. It is a Breton celebration and is held in Wayrest on the 25th of the evening star. Originally a holiday for the god of debauchery, 
Which, yes, yeah, It has become yeah. a time of gift-giving parties and parading. Visitors are encouraged to participate. Saturalia shares many similarities to the New Life Festival. A shared tradition involves decorating evergreen trees with elaborate decorations and are topped with a shining light ornament on its peak. Right. Evergreen trees are chosen because they are associated with resilience and rebirth. Gift-giving is another thing shared, and giving gifts are placed under these festive trees. Okay. Saturalia trees are often used in both Saturalia and the New Life Festival. In both holidays, shades of cerulean are used as the color of clothing for these holidays. Oh, interesting. Okay. So essentially, though, it sounds like the Bretons have the better holidays all around. So next time I play any Elder Scroll game, I'm going to be a Breton. <laughs> and okay. now we get to the 30th or 31st of Evening Star. It depends on which calendar you're following because, of course, in Daggerfall, there was only 30 days. Right. So this is the Old Life Festival. So it's essentially the precursor to the New Life Festival? On the last day of the year, the Empire celebrates the holy day called Old Life. Many go to the temples to reflect on their past. Some go for more than this. Voters rumored that priests will, as the last act of the year, perform resurrections on beloved friends and family members free of the usual charge. Oh, wow. Worshippers know better than to expect this philanthropy, but they arrive in a macabre procession with the recently deceased, nevertheless. Wow. As with many celebrations, the ale flows free in all the taverns in all the cities of Tamriel, which is fun because if you remember back at the beginning of the year, yeah. there's also free ale the so whole it's, day. So it's basically 48 hours of boozing. <laughs> we're just, well, wait, we're boozing with dead bodies on our backs, <laughs> asking for resurrections. Like, come on. This is, this is, and then, of course, now insane. you realize why Bretons have Scour Day to clean up. <laughs> right. Okay, yeah. The Bretons have the best holidays because they're a bit more practical. They have essentially their moon feast day, so it's their version of Thanksgiving. They've got their version of, of Saturnalia, which is, which is pretty cool. And then they know that after two days of boozing and dragging dead bodies in the streets, they need one more day to clean up, which very smart. They're yeah. smart people. And in fact, um, if anyone wants to play, there's actually a mod called Holidays. Oh. For Skyrim. I think it's for both Special Edition and uh, not non-Special Edition. And that, it basically brings the celebrations to the different towns and stuff, including hanging lights and lanterns and all that stuff. Okay. So that's kind of a cool thing you can do. So that's the holidays that we have at this moment. Cool. And that's and the ones are going to go. That's kind of the big ones to kind of cover. There's a lot of obviously smaller ones. There's summoning days. So this wasn't comprehensive, but this no. is more like the big hits. Pretty much the ones I found the most interesting. And there's the summoning days. There's a lot of stuff where it's like, oh, this we what re this one town r runs races because you know there was a warrior who saved the town. Mm -hmm. with this feat of strength and like that'd be the whole thing and it's like that's not like yes fine but right there's not much to talk about there so there's not there's no reaction to it like okay cool like <laughs> yeah okay somebody ran a race for great so but yeah that's what we have for this episode well and this is coming out right before the what is considered quote-unquote the holidays so yeah. if you do celebrate we hope you have a fantastic holiday season Merry Christmas, Happy Hanukkah, Happy Kwanzaa, Happy New Year, especially to everybody. Yes. And if you don't even celebrate any of those, just enjoy the time off of work and Well, I and, hope people celebrate the New Year. At least it's, I would hope you would celebrate the New Year. But again, just Ooh. enjoy the time off work. Yeah. You know, that's... Take some time to relax, yeah. reflect. You know, stay cozy, stay safe Say and healthy. Say goodbye to this terrible year. Oh, we are so... I just, I just tweeted out that it's been a year. This or, is going to be... Or, our, Give it the finger. Kids, ask your parents. Yeah. So I realized that this is going to be our last public post because patrons will get our next episode right before the new year starts. Yeah. But this will be our last public post for 2020. So, and it will have been about a year of us recording. Yep. Next episode will be episode... 26 which would be exactly a year because we started with one episode in january yeah so so we'll we'll have done this for a year and we want to thank everybody who has helped make this crazy year a little better by listening to our podcast it's been one of the nice things for us to realize it's like it, we're given some joy out there you know despite 
And thank you to our pa- yeah. our, our current our, our our one patron at the moment, Gondar. Yes. Who and yes. giving us feedback and everything. And we hope that many of you consider becoming patrons in the future. And if you've got any ideas of what you would like to see us do in the future as content, please email us lore together at gmail.com. We always are looking for suggestions for things to cover, things to do mm-hmm. in the future, spinoffs and stuff. And just knowing that you guys listen has been great. We really appreciate y'all. We really do. We we love the little community that we've found of our podcasters as well. And y'all are great. We We wish we could hug you in person, but... COVID. But but germs. So So thank you for listening, and we will catch you all in 2021. Yes. Yeah. Bye. Bye.